I think. Yes, we are start now with our capacity building workshop. I'm gonna share my screen. Just a second, please. Okay, now you can see it. Yes. Yay, perfect. Okay, so hello everyone. Good morning from Mexico. I'm Jasmine Lopez, the current head of Capacity Development Commission. Welcome to the Capacity Building Workshop Team Development, uh, just for IPS officials. And I want to thank you all for joining us today. And I hope you enjoyed this event that we prepared with a, a lot of enthusiasm for you. Um, the last term to CDC though, it will be nice to have an activity where officials can learn and be prepared for what being a, an IPS official involves. So that's why during our changeover, we agreed to continue with this and make it real. So today we are having the presence of the last three IPSA presidents who agreed to be here and share their knowledge gained during uh, their time serving as officials and as well our current membership counselor who always has a contagious energy and show enthusiasm to us and he's sharing his experience. <laughs> so the goal for this workshop is to improve collaborative work through competing group leadership. So during the first talk and later in the breakout rooms, uh, we will learn about important group elements, adequate task sharing, how to keep the motivation and the teamwork dynamics that are important in an association like IFSA. So to start the event, we have the presentation of Shimon Erbrick, current membership counselor. Uh, he's from Czech <laughs> Republic. Um, he's sharing his experience as official. Uh, last term, he was a Southern Europe regional representative. And um, yeah, he's gonna share the importance of work as a team in IFSA. So thank you so much for accepting our invitation and for being here. So let's all welcome to Shimon. <laughs> Thank you so much for the introduction. <laughs> so hello, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Wait a bit. Uh, do you see it? Uh, yeah. So first of all, uh, something a little bit about me. Uh, thank you for the introduction and for inviting me. As uh, Yasmin already said, I am from Czechia. But I'm currently residing in Spain, but from Italian LC, <laughs> from AUSF Padova in Italy. Uh, I joined IFSA uh, in 2017 when I joined my uh, LC in Czechia. But my first uh, international experience was uh, one year later in the Southern European Regional Meeting in Portugal. And uh, there I got uh, really much involved in, uh, after that I got really much involved in IFSA and wanted to, uh, wanted to be more active. Uh, but my first uh, official position was just the last year when I was the regional representative for Southern Europe together with Elif from Turkey. And uh, this year I am the membership councillor. Uh, when they asked me uh, to have a talk here about uh, the important group elements, I was a little bit uh, uh, afraid because I never had uh, thought about these topics. And so uh, I just started to think about it currently after they invited me. Uh, so what I will uh, talk about is based on my experience and my thoughts, which doesn't mean that it's right. And you might have different experience and different op uh, opinions about what I will say. Uh, so take it with reserve. It's just very my personal experience and my thoughts, as I said. Okay, so uh, what is the group importance? Like, especially in uh, uh, kind of uh, volunteer organizations uh, and international organizations as IFSA is, uh, for me, the one of those most important, uh, most important importances elements uh, is that uh, when you work in a group, uh, you have uh, many points of view from different cultural backgrounds, from different national back back backgrounds. So it uh, helps uh, the team to cover the topic more in a broad, broader sense uh, than, for example, if, if you have more 
um, the group from the same background, uh, you miss some important points that, uh, for example, can be covered by uh, people from different backgrounds. And so this is one of uh, the best, uh, one of the great assets of the international team as, as if so is. The really great one, and as we all are students, and this is if so is just our volunteer or just our volunteering, uh, we all have uh, all other work, uh, like many other work as school stuff and so on. And so sometimes there comes a period when you have, when you are overwhelmed with all your stuff uh, and uh, you don't have uh, much time for your, uh, for your work in IFSA. But every time there is someone who helps you, the, the team that uh, stands behind you and gets your back, uh in uh like here in in the meme it's just like a, a funny uh funny expression but uh yeah it, it's true that always there uh when you are overwhelmed and cannot uh, do properly for some short period of time what you should there is always someone uh, to cover your back and to to help each other's out and uh, the next one uh since the work in work in the group is divided the tasks are divided it's less uh, less overwhelming for uh, one individual person that you don't have to do everything yourself, but there's the team and you can divide the work and it's more efficient. But at the same time, uh, it's, uh, it's important and it's an advantage, but it can be also a disadvantage when it is not really well managed. And by this, uh, I come to the next, next slide, which is a team structure. When I was, thinking about uh, this topic i my personal opinion is that there is no one structure that is right and the uh, and everything else is wrong but it always depends on the specific constellation of each group of uh, because there are different persons which needs a little bit different uh, approach so of what works in one group doesn't necessarily have to work in another group so the one who is uh, monitoring or uh, mentoring like who is managing the group, let's say, or like leading the leader, um, should be sensitive uh, for the needs of the group and adjust the structure or adjust the approach based on based on this. But what is for me uh, one of the most important to always remember in such an organization as is IFSA, a volunteer organization, is that uh, at the first place we are all friends. And that should be always the highlight, and it should be always uh, fun and enjoyable work. And yeah, so this should be always remembered. And uh, as I said, that uh, there, for me, there is always there is not one structure that should that should be uh, that this is right and the others are wrong. But what should be always there is this one person who is, let's say, managing the group or leading. And as uh, you see on the meme, uh, like it needs to push because if there is no one uh, like this leader or this manager, this whatever we call it, uh, you feel kind of uh, hidden in the group. Uh, so that if you see that the others are not uh, uh, doing their job, you feel, okay, I don't need to do the job as well. I have time because no one is actually working. And in the end, the work is not done. And so for me, this one person should uh, keep an eye that the work is done to know what uh, the tasks are for each individual person and to keep pushing them uh, or bothering the people as Damiano said, and it really works. Uh, I, <laughs> I experienced it myself. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this, is, this should be the role of this one person who is always uh, there to, to kind of lead the group. And uh, to get some um, to get some example of this, what I talk about, uh, I have here uh, the example from the last year as we worked uh, as RRs, and those are membership packages. Uh, to explain what it is, what it is, uh, there are there should be free membership packages uh, for uh, different kinds of uh, like interested. There there is one for uh, students who didn't hear about IFSA before and they hear for, uh, about it for the first time. So to explain what IFSA is, what IFSA does, what is the advantage of being member. Then the second uh, package is for uh, the group of students who already know about IFSA and want to create LC. 
So uh, in this package, it should be explained the application process and uh, whatever is connected to this. And the third package is for a newly accepted LC, so like a welcome package to IFSA. And as RRs last year, we were divided into these three groups to work on it. But there was no one uh, who was uh, this kind of leader or leading the group. And uh, in the beginning, we divided the work. So it was, it was done, uh, but nothing was happening actually since then. Like no one was actually writing their stuff what they were supposed to. And I was thinking, okay, so like we divided the work, but nothing is happening. And I was thinking, what was, what was the reason? And that was exactly this, that there was no one who would lead the group. And I was thinking, okay, if I won't do it, I guess uh, no one will and it will not be done. So in my group, I actually started to push the others a little bit. Yasmin knows, <laughs> we were together in the group. <laughs> um, but the thing is that it needs to be done more like suggestion. So I was like suggesting, okay, so what do you think about if we, in two weeks, we will draft our, our texts and then we will check it with the others and um, we will proceed like this. So I wasn't saying, okay, you will do this until this time. You will do this until this time. But it was more like open questions for the discussions. And in this way, uh, step by step, uh, we did our work. But because uh, no one was like no one like this was in the other groups, uh, in the end, uh, our package was the only one done. And the rest, uh, the, the other two, are for the RRs of this year. So. But I will make sure that we will manage to, to finish the membership packages this year. So this was the example of, uh, of this one person who is needed to push the others to bother, as Damiano says. And yeah, so this was just a little thought as introduction before the breakout rooms from my side. And thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, just, uh, just ask. <laughs> Thank you, Shimon. Yeah, it was nice to hear that experience we had last term. <laughs> so yeah, if you have a question, please write in the chat or feel free to open your mic and ask yourselves. Okay, well, looks like we don't have a question. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shimon. Um, I think this is gonna be really helpful for all and for the RRs be prepared because you are gonna finish that activity. Uh, thank you so much. We are gonna, yes, <laughs> we're gonna to continue. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add uh, that uh, based on the example that I said, uh, don't wait for the others to take the initiative, but rather take it yourself, because that's the most uh, most efficient way to make things done. <laughs> and yeah, also I wanted to say that I will have to leave now. I cannot stay unfortunately with you today, but I hope you will enjoy the event. And if you have any question later, just write to me. And yeah, I'm always here for you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shimon. Okay. So continue with the program. We have another three speakers. Uh, we are passing to the breakout rooms, um, leader by our last uh, three IFSA presidents. Uh, we want to thank you for accepting being part of this. Uh, the first one, it's going to be led by Alina Lehikoinet with the topic task sharing. Uh, the next one is by Amos Amanubo talking about volunteer work. And the last but not least uh, by Dolores Pavlovic under the topic teamwork dynamics. So you will have four minutes in the breakout rooms and at the end of the time, uh, get back to the main room and each team will share the results uh, with the rest of us. So uh, let's start with this and see you in a while. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> nice to hear that. Okay. Is everyone back?
yeah, I think we are. Okay, so I hope you have a really good time during these, these sessions. So now we are going to share what did we learn during this time in each breakout room. It was uh, really nice to hear from you. Uh, so let's start with the first one. So Alina, who's going to present your outcomes? <laughs> La will present for our group. Okay, go ahead. Hello, everybody. Am I audible? Okay, yes. so uh, in our breakout room, Alina was able to talk about the importance of sharing work, how to delegate work, um, tools for collaboration, scheduling, and um, considering the time zones as well. And here you can see right now is the challenges that Alina identified for us. So in breakout room number one, we talked about uh, task sharing and scheduling. So here are the... Um, identified problems that Alina presented earlier that we've discussed. So first would be the no motivated collaborators, disagreeing about project specifics and low quality output. So uh, it was a fruitful discussion, I would say, since um, as you can see, we had a lot of inputs. Um, with regards to the no motivated collaborators, what um, uh, points that were highlighted earlier was that, um, again, we, we go back to what Simone said earlier, that uh, we are not just um, um, workmates here, we are friends, like what Paula said, as you can see here. So um, in addition to that also, um, uh, no motivated collaborators, um, based from my experience, or based from what I'm experiencing here in the Philippines, is that there are a lot of factors that would be considered why a person is not motivated. So um, what we do here in the Philippines is we do kamustahan. So kamustahan is... a uh, somehow a check-in where you share your st uh, stresses, victory, struggles for the week or the past week. So um, it helps the members or the collaborators, commissioners to distress. And also um, um, here uh, right now, um, in my ex IFSA experience, this is my first time holding a position in IFSA. Uh, we have, um, what do you call this? Um, I still do not have commissioners. So um, no motivated collaborators would be... Um, um, somehow a problem, but um, what it, what I do is um, I, I try to make connection with other people in IFSA that, so that they would be motivated to do um, work and I ensure or I try to ensure that uh, the work that they would do is enjoyable so that um, that's how we address the no motivated um, um, collaborators. The next would be the low quality input. So um, um, I, I what Uma said here, it's the blue one. So um, somehow they would, um, uh, um, Uma said that in her LC, they, uh, the members are having difficulty with the evaluation part of the project. So um, maybe we, um, um, how to address that is, uh, we, we do constructive criticism like what Uma said earlier. And also I, what I do personally is I identify their strengths and weaknesses so that uh, they would be suitable for the work. And at the same time, if they want to improve on that specific task, their skills, they want to improve their skills on that specific task, I would um, enjoy or I would be glad to give that um, task to them. Also, um, what Paula said is um, they would ask for other people's opinion about um, the re-evaluation of the capabilities of your team so that you would know how um, you can delegate the task to them. Lastly, disagreeing about the project specific. So um, again, here you can see that uh, uh, you, you can also um, tap other IFSA members or IFSA officials with regards to how they um, see the project. Since um, what Paula said earlier again was uh, there are times or tendencies where um, um, the project is too big for the committee or the commission. So we need to reevaluate about it so that, um, again, you would not result to low quality outputs or no motivated collaborators. And then uh, what I do personally, again, is uh, I practice collaborative and joint leadership so that I ensure that uh, my commissioners are heard and that are they, their ideas are um, um, their, their, their ideas are manifested and um, as well as uh, 
we also need to, um, as you can see here, find common interest on the focus of the project so that uh, we would be um, goal-oriented in doing the project specifics. And uh, it's not presented here, but Paula asked earlier, Alina, Paula asked Alina earlier about, um, is it ethical to delegate a task? to a commissioner who is not in the meeting. So I think that's a good um, question. And I'd like to give it here since we might experience it in the near future. So Alina said earlier that um, going back to what Simon said, um, they, we can ask, but we do not push the work um, to them that we are not uh, mandating them to do the work. Rather, we are asking them if they are willing to do the work. So that's uh, the summary of breakout room number one's discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lau. I, I think you have a lot of fun in your in your room. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with us. So uh, the next one, it's a, a breakout room two. Uh, so go ahead, Kyle. Can you please share the screen, Jasmine, the Jamboard? Yes. Give me a sec. Okay. So while Jasmine is preparing our Jamboard, we have Amos talk about um, volunteer work and different IFSA values that he had learned during his time in IFSA, which is actually very nice because I learned a lot and we actually have a lot of takes, takeaways here. So let us start. First one, what is the importance of volunteer, volunteer work? It gives us a sense of service. With volunteer work, it gives you a sense of humility and a sign that you are really doing something for others for free. It's like you're doing something very meaningful and it's give you a sense of service. The other one it's in IFSA, it is a space where you can grow your own skills. You can learn and you can share some of your expertise and such. With IFSA, you, you're working in this place where mistakes are okay and you have a chance to correct your mistakes. Another opportunity of volunteer work is that it has exclusive opportunities. Opportunities that are also only present for IFSA officials and these are very important because it gives it's 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 a sort of a network in it gives you a more opportunities when you're far more um, um, included in IFSA. Another one is we talk about network. The importance of volunteer volunteer work is that it it makes you uh, connect with a lot of other people. It helps you make friends through sharing and connecting. And not only that, these friends can be long uh, lifelong friends. And the, another thing is regarding self-awareness. Um, since IFSA is a worldwide, a worldwide organization, IFSA is all about diversity. With regard to this diversity, it, help, it helps us be more self-aware. It helps us to be culturally aware since we need to be respectful and we need to learn the different cultures of our members. It also helps us uh, to build ourselves. Being open and socializing with different people, it helps us learn about them, their culture, and what makes them unique. With that, you are building yourself to be more culturally aware and diverse. Other than that is empathy. You learn how to have empathy. You learn to put yourself in shoes of other people. So basically, that's uh, that are the things that we learned during the breakout room too. And I would like to quote something Amos said. Uh, Here in IFSA, it is just not about yourself. You have groups of people who are your friends who shares who shares the same aspiration and goals with you. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kai. Uh, thank you, Amos, because it was really inspiring to hear from you during this time. Uh, the next one and the last one is the room three. So uh, Dolores, who's going to present? <laughs> um, Ao is going to present. Me. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry I cannot uh, open my camera because my signal is bad right now. So, uh, can you guys hear my voice? Yes, yes, perfectly. Okay. In, the, in room three, uh, Dolores and us talk about the teamwork and criticism. First of all is uh, the importance of work with people from all around the world. Uh, it gives us new perspective with different backgrounds and different perspective with every unique individuals in
I think Al lost her signal. Oh no. Yes, I think we lost her. Okay, maybe I can um fill in on Al's um yeah yeah. Sorry, Al. <laughs> but yes, um, Dolores gave a really inspiring and motivating um talk about uh the importance of work from uh with people all over the world, and we have to be in order to have great teamwork within an organization we need to um to acknowledge the different perspectives and the different backgrounds that come from unique individuals given our different cultures and then uh, she also mentioned or she also talked about uh, constructive criticism is it positive or is it negative and um dolores um gave um a technique on constructive criticism which is a feedback sandwich um it's basic it's basically um a process of uh how to effectively tell someone your constructive criticism and um it's quite long so i i won't uh, mention it uh for now and then um constructive criticism is just a fast track in learning and growing um it shouldn't be feared by the people and it sh uh, should, shouldn't also be negative and instead we should be open to receiving and giving constructive criticism because it um it makes us grow and it um gives us positive feed uh, or feedback on what we should improve in the future and in order to be effective with our constructive criticisms we need to um give specific advices or feedback to their um, work or output and you don't always have to strive for perfection which leads us to uh, her third topic which is self-criticism um, we should always criticize ourselves positively because um, whenever you negatively criticize yourself it will be unhealthy for your mental health so um, and she also, Dolores also mentioned the main reasons why people self-criticize. The first one is um, people usually uh, criticize themselves by comparing themselves with, the, uh, with other people. And the best way to overcome that is to comparing yourself with the person that you are yesterday. That's the best way to, um, to self-criticize positively. And the second one is Self-criticism usually starts from having unrealistic expectations. So set uh, realistic expectations, not only for yourself, but for the other people that you're working uh, with. And then um, you shouldn't overwork yourself because we are all um, volunteers in IPSA. So we should delegate uh, our task and our time um, efficiently so that we don't uh, have burnout. And then um, the best way to learn is to make mistakes. And lastly, she talked about the importance of teamwork. Um, she briefed, uh, since we ran out of time, she briefly <laughs> and uh, she briefly mentioned the five steps: uh, forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. And then um, we should also acknowledge that um, in each team. Every person has um, important and unique roles and that um, we should always accept the, uh, the feedback or the thoughts or opinions from these unique individuals in our team. And um, I would just like to say kudos to Dolores for giving such an inspiring uh, talk. I wish we had more time. And yes, that's all for breakout room three. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I had a great time. Thank you, Will. And thank you, Dolores. I think that was really nice. Uh, I hope uh, you can um, look after the record, uh, record of the sessions because I think in each room was really good, <laughs> all the we have to say. Uh, thank you all for sharing your outcomes. So now to close the event, we are uh, having uh, general advices for our speakers.
uh, for us for our um, development during uh, this term and even after. So uh, can we start with you, Dolores? Of course. Um, so general advice from me to you all would be really embrace the that you're working with so many people all over the world. It's such a unique experience and it really is lovely having friends everywhere, meeting so many people and working on projects that are very important, not only for your self-development, but also for ifs and for the planet. So just have fun, enjoy it, love every second. I miss it so much. I miss it already. And you will, you will, I'm laughing. I guess he misses it too. <laughs> um, you will have friends for life after this, but you will also have very important, um, very important abilities and capabilities to go along with it. So it is worth your time, love every minute of it and just have a blast. It's what it's about, make mistakes and have the great time, the greatest time of your life. Thank you, thank you so much for that. Go ahead, Amos. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to echo a lot of um, the words from Dolores. Um, the first one is um, aspire to grow um, um, have a vision for yourself and for others on your team. Um, the second one is have fun as much as you can. Um, the third one is about mistakes. Um, <laughs> this came quite a number of times from Dolores and it's going to come quite a number of times from my side. So just to remind you guys that after your space in IFSA, once you leave this space and you enter a professional space, it is difficult to make mistakes. So this is, I don't want to say it's your last chance to make mistakes because it sounds really exaggerated, but this is one of your coolest moments to make mistakes and learn from them. So please learn as much as you can. And thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you, Amos. That was lovely. So Alina? Yeah, I definitely second everything that Amos and Dolores have said so far. Um, but also hope that I have something to add to that because my experience of IFSA presidency and a lot of my other IFSA time too has been during COVID, which is, I guess, more close to your uh, participants' experience than maybe Dolores and Amos's have been. Um, I hope we get out of this during the term so that you can all get to participate in in-person IFSA meetings too. But I would really like to encourage all of you to uh, try to like connect to people online. We nowadays have the IFSA Discord and like we try to actually have the team building stuff. We try to play together online and uh, it is actually very much possible to make those, uh, make those um, friends online too, even though it's, I know it's tiring, uh, but like, it's, it's so worth it. Um, so yes, I would like to encourage to that. Uh, I was also going to say to make mistakes, but that also, <laughs> that was said already. So I think I'm gonna pretty much uh, finish here. Thank you. Thank you, Alina. We, we have to keep that. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you all uh, to all our officials uh, for coming and the speakers for accepting the invitation. It was a pleasure to have you here, to hear from you. I think you, you teach us some important things today uh, that are going to be important in our time, uh, not just as officials, even for other activities in our lives. Uh, yeah, so I also want to thank Paula <laughs> because she uh, <laughs> started with this the, the last term and she has been really supportive with me. And also thanks to Belle and Ibe, she's not right here, but uh, they both are being there for me all this time, <laughs> helping me. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for, for your support during the whole planning. Uh, you three girls are amazing. Thank you so much for that. And also uh, the people who's, who was helping me during the, uh, during the session with all the technical issues. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so now the, the last point in the agenda for today is take a picture. <laughs> so if you can turn on your cameras. OK. 
Okay, so Alex. <laughs> Okay, so everyone smile. Yay. One, two, three. One more, one more. Smile. One, two, three. Yay. <laughs> Perfect. I hope you have a really good time. Uh, I think we really learned a lot. And let's get uh, uh, have a meeting in person please. <laughs> I really want to meet you all. <laughs> so thank you so much again, Dolores, Amos, Alina, and Shimon. He, he's not here right now, but thank you so much for accepting this. And thank you all for joining us today. So have a great night, uh, <laughs> day, <laughs> uh, morning for, for one, uh, for the ones from Latin America. <laughs> thank you so much and see you soon. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye.